Hey, I just got this uh, package from Jason Jensen. Um, he added a lot of cool details and structure parts to our little diorama here. Uh, so I'm gonna open this up and add some more. Uh, so one of the things I'd like to add to this uh, scene is a rooftop sign. Um, and I want it to extend from the high level of the roof to the low level. Uh, so we need to figure out the difference uh, in height. And one way to do that is to take a machine square. It's just a metal machine square. And take a piece of scrap of wood uh, with some tape. And now we have our uh, two different heights of our framework for our sign. I can just measure the distance from the bottom edge here, which is 15 sixteenths. I'm just going to write that down. And I know uh, the height difference. So we've drawn up our sign in the computer. Uh, you, of course, can do this with a pencil and paper uh, if you don't have a drawing program. Um, <clears throat> and this is the basic framework of our sign that goes uh, over two levels of the roof. This is the high end and the low end. Uh, so this is basically four by four or six by six wood posts or 364th square in HO. And then we have some 132nd inch square uh, horizontal uh, supports there. And uh, these are the braces that'll go in the back. Uh, there's two different sizes, of course, because we have two different heights. So these three are for here, here, and here, and then these three for here, here, and here. So what you want to do with any kind of template is get a nice uh, flat surface. This is just uh, some birch plywood that I work on a lot. And you want to tape it down because we're going to build the template right off of the, uh, build the framework rather, right off the template. So keep this pretty flat. We don't want any uh, bumps or anything. So once we have this taped down, we're going to put down some um, wax paper or parchment paper. Uh, this is transparent so we can see through it. And you want to rub this tape down pretty good because it's kind of a non-stick surface, which is what we want. But of course, we want our tape to stick. So be gentle with it. Don't move it around too much. It should stay in place. You want it nice and flat, as flat as you can get it. Uh, so then we need our wood uh, that we're going to use for all our framework. And we need to stain this uh, with an ink wash. Uh, so we'll be using a Hunterline stain. Uh, we'll probably, this is medium brown, but we're going to use driftwood. And the easiest way to stain all this wood at once is to get a plastic container, throw all the wood in there, and then take your stain. Again, this is driftwood by Hunterline and just dump it into the container. Uh, you can salvage uh, the wash when you're done, whatever's left, because uh, it's worth saving. And then after a few minutes, we can grab our wood, throw it on a paper towel so it dries. Okay, so we have our template set up here, and I've got some uh, Aliens Tacky Glue on a palette. Uh, it's a good glue. It's strong. It dries fast. It dries clear. And um, I'm going to cut our vertical post first. And I'm just using a straight edge razor. Uh, it's really much easier to do it with this kind of blade than an X-Acto. And I need three of these, so I'm going to cut three right away. So you can see how useful the template is. We don't have to measure anything. We can just trace right off of our drawing. <clears throat> now you'll notice um, this last leg here is longer than the rest. And there's a reason for that, of course. Um, what we'll do when we install this into the uh, roof is cut a hole in the roof and we'll be able to put this entire assembly and glue it standing it vertically and it'll 
stay in place because it's in, in the roof. Otherwise, it'll flop around and we have to come up with a better, another way to keep it straight before we put in our supports. Just close. Okay, so I just um, cut these on the laser cutter, as you can see, and I've also uh, sprayed them with a light gray primer. And the reason for that is I want to use the gray as the base color of these uh, steel letters. And uh, they'll be painted white, but I want it to look like the gray is showing through. So I'm doing the gray first, and then I'm applying some white with a sponge. It's a little tricky because these things don't weigh very much, so they flop around a lot. So you could pin one down. This is kind of like dry brushing. You don't want a lot of paint on your sponge. So I've used a sponge uh, with some white paint, and then I took a brush and just made some more solid uh, opaque areas to the sign. Uh, just to to take away some of the light gray. Um, what the next step is, is applying some rust, rust coloring or rust weathering with two shades of oil paint. Uh, I'm using uh, burnt umber and yellow ochre, and you want to use at least two uh, shades of oils for rust or acrylics, if that's what you want to do, but I like the the oils. So the next step is uh, applying a uh, splatter kind of uh, pattern of burnt umber and it'll make some nice fine specks of rust that you wouldn't ever be able to do with a brush. So I'm using a toothpick and I've got the burnt umber on my brush and I'm going over kind of randomly and if it's not flowing too much you can add a little bit of mineral, spir mineral spirits. Okay, so I've decided to uh, make a change here. As you can see, the white gray lettering isn't very readable on the uh, frame. So I need the signage to be red, and I don't want to lose my rust work. So what I've done is taken some red paint, just red acrylic, and gone right over uh, our original paint job, but not completely. So now it's 
as if the red paint is uh, peeling off uh, all this other undercoat of gray and white and rust, and it'll work um, if you don't cover the entire uh, lettering. So now I'm just going to apply some glue uh, to these upper horizontal supports. Now I don't know exactly where the lettering is going to land, so I'm just kind of covering most of the uh, piece of wood here. And then we'll just make sure we get our finger across here. And now the whole thing is adhesive. It's going to dry clear, so I'm not too concerned about it. And then we just position our lettering. So now our lettering is on our sign, but now you can see these little connectors, these are frets. Uh, that we use to keep our lettering together when we do the laser cutting. Uh, but now they need to be removed. Um, a shortcut would be to color them black. I mean, they can blend in with your framing. They won't be that noticeable. But it doesn't take much to get rid of them. Uh, we're just going to use some um, sprue cutters here. These are nice and fine and sharp, and we'll just cut them away. So I'm taking a little bit of uh, oil paint this is burnt umber again, and I'm, with some mineral spirits, I'm applying it just under a few locations uh, where it might get a little dirty or be a little shadow, and it'll just uh, help separate the letters a little bit in some places. Okay, so now we need to uh, plant our sign, and it's going to go about here. Um, and again, we're going to we're going to plant this leg uh, in through the roof. So we need to mark a hole and then cut into the roof so that post fits right in there. And it's good to take some scrap, not the actual sign to see if it fits into the hole. You don't want to break the sign. It's still a little too small, so make another cut. And there we go. Uh, so here I've mixed, uh, this is actually white glue with uh, some black paint. So basically made black glue. And I'm gonna use that on the bottom of the signposts so that if we see the glue, it will look like tar and not glue. So I'm just gonna put it on the bottom of each uh, post. As you can see, it doesn't fall over because we have that support right there uh, through the hole. And now we're going to let it dry, and then once it's dry, we can put in our rear supports. This diorama is complete. Uh, I finished the roof sign on top here. I've added a bit more detail, some metal castings, uh, some figures to bring the scene to life, and some more scenery, and a tree in the back here, and the back is now finished, and it's a complete scene. Um, now that it's complete, uh, we're gonna put it up on eBay and uh, put it up for a charity auction where 100% of the proceeds go to the Humane Society of the United States uh, to help animals in need. 
And uh, I really want to thank Jason Jensen for coming along with me on this project. Uh, he's added so much to it. Uh, it's always inspirational uh, to see another modeler's work, even more so when you're working together. And uh, I've learned a lot just from looking at his stuff up close. It's been a blast. So thank you, Jason, and thank you everyone for watching, and uh, good luck with the auction. Thanks.